but they said that what they did see out there were that bodies were floating and there were still some people strapped into their seats when they were trying to rescue these people. Uh, one of the lifeguards grabbed a baby and also a seven-year-old girl who was unresponsive at the time, both actually unresponsive. Uh, once again, we're being told from Javier Otero from Miami Beach Fire Rescue that there are between 17 to 19 people on board. Of course, there is just a lot of information going on. They're not quite sure. They can't pinpoint it. And at this point, eight people confirmed dead. That's the latest out here reporting live. Sharon Lawson, NBC6. Sharon, thank you. Now Let's go to Amra Sohn live at Watson Island. Amra? That's right. Right now, we are here on Watson Island in front of the Chalks International Airlines building. Behind me, uh, looks like family members of at least one of the victims have gathered here. They're not talking to the media right now, but we are overhearing that uh, they believe at least one of their family members uh, was aboard that Albatross seaplane that crashed around 2.30 uh, this afternoon. Again, no officials have come out here, and we did try knocking on the door here of this Chalks uh, uh, International. National Airlines building. It looks like there's a sheriff's officer here who's also knocking, and it looks like uh, no one is coming to the door right now. But the uh, Chalks Airline did release a statement saying, quote, we pray that it isn't ours, it being one of their seaplanes possibly, uh, of a possibly crashing uh, this afternoon. But again, right now, uh, just a few moments ago, we saw more family members arrive um, in tears and then leaving. We did try to talk to them, but of course, uh, in their grief, they didn't want to speak with us. We don't know exactly how many uh, of, of the victims that these family members may know at this point. But again, right now, we are waiting word from the Chalks International Airline to see if they can confirm that if this was indeed one of their airplanes. Uh, back to you in the studio. Amara, thank you. Uh, once again, now we have uh, eight confirmed dead as a result of this crash. And uh, some very disturbing information uh, from uh, Sharon uh, Lawson. Uh, a source on the scene, one of the rescue crews, saying that as they responded very quickly out there to the water, uh, the Miami Beach Fire Rescue, the water crews, that, uh, that, uh, that they did see bodies floating in the water, and in some cases, people, obviously passengers, still strapped in their seats as they tried to uh, reach those people in the water. So again, eight confirmed dead. Uh, 17 to 18 people on board. This is according to Javier Otero with the uh, Miami Beach Fire Rescue, and uh, again, those numbers somewhat um, conflicting, but again, as, as uh, recovery and search crews try to determine exactly how many people on board, and of course, also speaking with uh, somebody from Chalks Airlines, which of course, according to AMRA, they are, they are not responding at this point. Yeah, and, I, and I think uh, we're going to hear more and more disturbing stories as more and more eyewitnesses uh, come to the forefront to tell us exactly what they saw. Uh, Willard, as, a, as an experienced pilot, um, is there any way you can give us any insight from what we just heard now in terms of uh, the plane making a disturbing noise, left engine up in smoke, then an explosion and the wing coming off? Well, each one of the witnesses we have heard so far described some type of turn to the left. And Sharon Lawson, the person that she just spoke to, uh, talked about, uh, in essence, what it would amount to be, as we go back to our live picture, a, a left engine failure uh, on this airplane or some type of problem with the left engine on the left side of it. And that would have caused uh, the airplane to roll to the left and then come down. This airplane, Tony, would only have been several hundred feet in the air at that point. I mean, it's a short distance over to Watson Island. And uh, this is a file video, we want to emphasize, file video of uh, Chalks Air airliner similar to the one today uh, taking off and then you'll see this plane coming back into land uh, that's less than a mile uh, that distance and uh, once this airplane took off at probably somewhere in the vicinity uh, it's a pretty slow moving aircraft of a hundred knots or so uh, that it took off just above that uh, it would not have gone very far it would have only been several hundred feet in the air at that time when it came by uh, the Coast Guard spokesman we talked to who was actually on duty today over on the Miami Beach Coast Guard station said he saw it go by, didn't see or hear any problems, and then less than 500 yards after that, all of the other witnesses that we have talked to have said that the airplane made some type of left turn 
and then they heard an explosion and it went into the water. And uh, at least from those witnesses, they're all giving us the same kind of information, uh, which tells us uh, that there was some kind of problem clearly on the left side of the airplane, uh, which would have caused the airplane to curve or, or turn to the left, uh, maybe even uh, some type of violent uh, pitching motion uh, as well, accompanying that and then going down into the water. But this airplane probably uh, did not reach a thousand feet in altitude. It's probably just several hundred feet above the ground. Uh, and this picture right here is really the worst picture in terms of mm -hmm. this is the area, those workers in the white suits and the blue suits, also where uh, Hank Tester is located, who are actually taking the bodies off of the boats when the police agencies bring them over to them. Uh, Willard, have you ever been on a plane like this? On a seaplane, yes. Not this particular type, but uh, something similar. And uh, when I was uh, out flying uh, with one of my Air Force buddies on one of these kinds of planes, actually a little smaller than this, uh, it takes a, a lot of skill in terms of landing and taking off out of the water because in addition to all of the normal things that you have to deal with in terms of the wind and making sure you take off in the right direction and all of those kinds of things, they have to obviously deal with the tide to make sure that uh, they have that under control and also uh, what the uh, sea state is at that time in terms of correcting for the waves and those kinds of things. And uh, th these workers are going to have a very uh, tough job out there during the course of the day today, Tony. These are, these are pretty, uh, th these planes are like workhorses, though, aren't they? I mean, they make oh. a number of flights back and forth. In fact, uh, in some of the due diligence that we, uh, that we have come up with thus far here at NBC6, Willard, uh, uh, since uh, crashes have been recorded, according to the Chalks Ocean Airways website, they've had no known fatal crashes in their history. Yeah, very safe airline, uh, very safe airplane. They've been doing this a long time, uh, going back and forth uh, from the Bahamas. And when you would simply think about it and say, well, why wouldn't they land on the ground and use a normal runway? Uh, there's a lot more water out there, especially over in the Bahamas, than it is uh, you know, in terms of uh, structured airports. And they don't have to worry about the kinds of things about how long is a runway, is the runway uh, you know, in the right direction in terms of the wind, because uh, many of the airports, I Obviously, over in the Bahamas, they don't have those kinds of resources to have uh, runways that run uh, east and west, north and south, diagonal, those kinds of things. And because of that, this aircraft and this airline is able to adjust with the wind to have a safe flight, regardless of what the circumstances are out there. They can just turn the airplane and point it in the direction that the wind is going. Actually, really, really a good idea uh, in terms of aviation, a very safe way to fly in terms of taking off into the wind to be able to get the most amount of lift to get the airplane up in the air safely. All right, well, thank you. You know, Julia, one of the things I was just thinking about here as we approach uh, uh, 412 here on this on this Monday afternoon. Uh, we've been experiencing sunset a little after five now as we uh, head into the winter months, uh, winter officially starting on Wednesday. So uh, there's only about an hour and maybe 15 minute left of light. It's a good point. Divers have been in the water now for almost an hour and a half. Um, and now, of course, not only are they racing to try to find any survivors or pull others from the water, but I've now just been they're told racing. 12 people now confirmed dead by the Coast Guard. 12 people confirmed dead. So, of course, uh, that makes the, uh, the rescue effort less for divers, but nonetheless just as important. And time now, even more of, of the essence, as you said, Tony, with sunset not too far off. And uh, also just some other information regarding as this investigation moves forward on this plane. The FBI is now investigating this, not only the NTSB, <coughs> because witness reports that there was an explosion. That alone now means that the FBI wants to look at that to determine if there's any possibility that this in any way, shape, or form could be somehow uh, terrorist-related. And uh, we're not suggesting anything like exactly. that. This is just it's standard, standard procedure. operating procedure the, for the uh, FBI. You know, things have changed since 9-11, and there is a plane, there is an explosion. There are now 12 confirmed dead. The FBI is investigating, involved with this. And as we take this look now, you can see another one of those uh, gurneys being rolled mm. up by Miami Beach Fire Rescue. Uh, in preparation for what we hope will be any survivors perhaps pulled from the water. But again, uh, with 12 confirmed dead thus far, there, this has only been a recovery operation. Um, and it's a very, a very difficult afternoon for not only the family members of, of those on board who by now are no doubt uh, suspecting that if their loved ones were planning to take off on a Chalks uh, Ocean Airways, uh, They've been able to piece that together. And again, a very disturbing afternoon for not only the rescue crews who were in the water, but for witnesses who heard and saw this plane uh, go down shortly after 2.30.
Well, I mean, when we, we now have, as we said, 12 confirmed dead, that according to the Coast Guard, and based on that, and uh, the numbers that we have early on, that there were 16 people on board this flight. There's been some, uh, some conflicting stories, some said 17, some said 18, but uh, our base number here was 16 with two pilots, 14 passengers, one infant. Um, and Hank Tester has been telling us that he has been seeing uh, these gurneys come in with the yellow uh, blanket over, over the... Uh, Victims, and it's just been a very tragic and very sad and disturbing scene here uh, this afternoon since this plane went, went down at 2.30 this afternoon. Tony and Julia, uh, one thing that we haven't talked about yet, and this is a real tragedy regardless of, of what we find out in terms of the numbers, but, and Tony, you're familiar with this area. There's several restaurants along mm -hmm. in there. We saw yeah. the response of many, many uh, people who, some who are vacationers, some who pleasure boaters who live here. This is an area that uh, the waterway is frequently used uh, by those out just to have a good time. Uh, on jet skis, on surfboards, some even laying out along the beach there. Uh, this is a, a real tragedy, but where that airplane went down is only a very, very short distance where there are a lot of people laying out on the beach today. Yeah, no, no absolutely. And a lot of people seeing this, this, this tragedy unfold. And the thing is, too, is we, you know, because we don't have any, any information on who these passengers are, uh, we don't know if they're local. We don't know if they're if they're out of towners because a lot of a lot of locals too hop over to the Bahamas, uh, you know, make a make a long week out of it, or uh, you know, the, uh, for many people because of the holiday season, vacation started today. So uh, so again, we we don't have any idea who these people were on this plane. Again, the Coast Guard is telling us that there were 16 people on board, 14 of which are passengers, and as of now, 12 have been confirmed dead. And of course, the. Uh the safety issue comes into play again because, of Willard, you mentioned that plane would not have been more than, you said, what, maybe 100, 150 feet off the ground. So if there were other pleasure uh, boaters in the area, surfers, people on jet skis, those people very well could have been in danger as this plane was coming across and then started to go down. Um, so we can only wonder what may have been going on through the pilot's mind as he uh, realized that there was something wrong with his plane. Were there people in the water that he needed to try to avoid? Was that even a, a time consideration or was it just, you know, something that happened so quickly? Uh, and as you said, I mean, we, we're, we're all used to seeing these planes take off down government cut. If you're on MacArthur Causeway and you look over, it's, you know, it's a fixture here. It's a beautiful sight. You see the cruise ships, you see the, the pelicans, you see people fishing, and, and you see the seaplanes. Right. And, uh, and it could have been more people even out there today had it been not, uh, not so overcast, because it really has been a rather dreary South Florida day. Yet still, there are a number of people out there, and all those people um, who, who made a dash.